Good evening. This is Dirty Talk 101 Las Vegas, where we talk to the bold, stories unfold from the young to the old, and nothing's off limits to be told. It's your girl, Carlucci. You know, I'm going to always keep it Gucci. You can talk to me about your coochie or whatever else you have on your mind. And as always, what is up you right yes thank you guys for being here happy monday happy monday (sighs) what you got up out there in la girl oh my goodness this place is getting crazy so um i don't know if you guys heard about it but basically they're trying to cancel Halloween on that ass out here. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. we're going to have it second in Vegas because everybody is going to come to Vegas for sure. Uh, if you don't know by now, Halloween in Vegas is like Mardi Gras in New Orleans. So y'all might want to just come out here to Vegas. You might, you might, because basically right now, um, LA County is banning trick or treating. They're basically saying that, um, any events of 10 or more are not welcome and, uh, everybody needs to have on their mask and kind of practice social distancing and that on Halloween, you can't really do that. So they basically issued a new health guideline that banned trick or treating and other Halloween activities over in the LA County, um, area so that decision was uh back on last wednesday and they they cited the inability to maintain safe social distancing and the potential for gatherings beyond household members so they nixed trick-or-treating for this year and that really sucks because it's on a freaking saturday hello i'm not okay with it (laughs) Yeah, well, like I said, it's going down on here in Vegas. I don't see how they can really ban trick or treating, seeing how it's in the neighborhoods. I mean, but the cops going to be out telling everybody to go home. Like, how's that even going to happen? But I did have some people that told me they were just going to throw the uh, candy in the grass. And look, kids, y'all can go find it. You ain't coming <laughs> to the door. So it's another way to do it. <laughs> I don't know if I can do like that. Have the... a Halloween set. Yeah, you... tell me. The a human Halloween pinata. Set. They're just going to throw the candy out like a bit over. <laughs> that is correct. Well, Halloween is quickly approaching. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say Halloween's quickly approaching, so I guess I better get to Vegas, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> outfits are going up right now. I'm about to sell these suits online for somebody who want to be a witch this Halloween. I don't know. I just, hey, good time to get rid of boots right now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, Vegas always keeps it cracking. Well, I guess speaking of tricks or treats, um, there's a lot going on in terms of um, the news and what's going on right now with uh, Mr. The the Tricks Colored, the Tricks Colored rapper, Takashi 69 He's in the news again. Oh, man, what did he do this time? Um, he beat up his baby mama and he told all about it. It was pretty crazy. Oh boy. So tell us about it. What happened? I don't Um, understand what. Well, okay. Well, in an interview that he just gave, um, he basically detailed his, uh, domestic violence between him and his baby mother, Sarah. And, um, he said that he basically blacked out and that he didn't even remember putting his hands on her. Uh, but that like... He all he remembers was saying is that she violated the code. I don't know. I thought the whole interview was kind of a cop out. You guys can read the whole thing if you just Google uh, Takashi Six Nine and Baby Mama drama. It'll come up. Um, I don't know. It, it didn't seem like something like you. You already know how I feel about domestic violence. I don't believe anybody should be putting their hands on anyone. And um, I don't know. I thought it was a horrible excuse for whatever he said. He didn't even give a good reason. Uh, he just kept on saying that she violated the code. So I'm like, um, whatever that's supposed to mean. Um, I don't know. He, he's wild. Yeah. Huh? I don't know what the code is. So, uh, okay. Uh, he was basically alluding to the fact that he felt that his baby mother had slept with 
uh, one of the quote unquote homies. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but it's that like how know. many how yeah, many you know, girls had he slept with? I don't know. Oh boy! Well, right. in that case, you know, again, never a reason to put your hands on somebody, and if you know somebody sleeping with somebody else, you gotta you just gotta take that in the you just gotta take it. You know, it's just one of those things you gotta learn from and uh, move forward. But. Good I luck definitely to them. agree. I guess that they're still in a relationship. No, they actually have broke up. His new girlfriend's name is Jade, and she's a whole other hot mess. Um, we'll talk about her probably next week. She's she's been doing some things in the news as well. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. He, he he's I don't know. He's a lost case as far as I'm concerned. But um, in other strange couple news, uh. I guess, did you hear about Caitlyn Jenner and Courtney, uh, wanting, wanting Courtney and Scott to get back together? Yes, uh, quite a few people have been, uh, seeing them out and about, eating out some weirdo shit, cause, uh, he, he was dating some model chick, right? Yes, he was, he was dating a model. I think I want to say Nicole, but I forgot her name. Uh, yeah, just. Some weirdo shit, like eating at the same spot, and I'm just kind of like, you know, that's kind of what I want to get in and talk about tonight, later on, is just relationships, you know, period, whether it's a friendship, a love, love ship, hate ship, uh, shit situation type shit, uh, but just relationships, period, like, when it, when it comes to working things out with people you've dealt with in the past, like, should you or should you just keep a pushing, but yeah. Uh, it was seemed kind of weird, but then again, the girl he was dating, Sophia Richie, uh, right? That, Wasn't he dating, dating Sophia Richie? Yeah. So you already know, right? Because I told you the story earlier about her and uh, uh, Will Smith's son, Jaden. Mm. No, tell they, me more. Yeah, they was they was out together, so. You know, it just seems like she let him went on, and he's like, hmm, can I get back into the situation? And, you know, Calvin Jenner and Scott Disick were always close, so, you know, it, it, it doesn't surprise me that he's rooting for um, him, just like Rob was rooting for Lamar, you know. Hmm. Like, well, well, I don't know. You know, he's he's done a lot of dirt, and Courtney's been pretty just chill the whole time, so I would say negative, though. Interesting, interesting. I don't know. Courtney seems like she was always still in love with Scott, but she just wouldn't let herself be because she knew what an asshole he was. Right. She just kept him at bay, which is what you got to do when they're just an asshole. I guess so. And unfortunately, that's her kid's father, so it's not like she can even, like, just start over. I mean, she could. It would just be so difficult with, with having children by him. Yeah, I know it's really getting bad when she had to call the cops on him. And um, I don't know. But speaking of calling the cops on people, guess who Guess who was in the news for having to serve somebody? Um, I don't know who she was. Is she a singer, actress? She's I didn't a hear singer. About She's a singer. Person. And it had to do with her supporting the Democratic Party. Um, But it was Cardi B. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Some little 17 year old little boy or something was giving yeah, her ass. Yeah, he was trying to come for yeah. Cardi. Cardi was like, do not play with me. So, like, recently, you know, uh, Cardi has been very vocal about her support of the Democrats and specifically in support of Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, and the like. Um, well, the WAP singer has been going all out for the left. And so that has led to alt-right trolls uh, coming for her. And one of these little trolls decided that it would be fun to go ahead and release her personal home address online. Uh And so, you know, obviously Cardi was like, oh, no, that's a no-no. So she hired a, a private investigator. She got the private investigator to go over to the little boy's house and have him served. Uh, uh, mm. mm-hmm. Out of control. Right? Mommy and daddy were flabbergasted. Uh, and I'm sure that kid's probably going to be grounded until about 2030. <laughs> Most likely. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. 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 Ye
Oh, I didn't like Lee. That was some dumb shit. Definitely uh, don't have to be out the house as soon as that motherfucker turns 21. Right? Yeah, <laughs> He's done so for right now. Yeah, that's crazy shit. So what else do you got? What else do you got? What What have you heard in the news? Well, I heard that Ray J divorced his uh, lover, Princess. What was her name? Princess Love. Like, what Ooh. the fuck was that all about? Really? Because that motherfucker just been married? <laughs> I knew that shit wasn't going to work. They just got married Soon and they I, have, like, two kids huh? together. They just got married and they have, like, two kids together. Yeah, well, he's filing for divorce. It's over. Oh, damn. You know, it's hard right now for people that are getting into relationships or getting married or that are married already because a lot of them are not used to being with their companions 24-7, and, and that is putting a lot of stress on different households, and it's really telling the, the, the strength of these relationships, you know, because you're not able to just run away and say, oh, I have to take this tour, I'm on tour, I'm going to be out of the country, and then they come back and, you know, it's all good because they haven't seen their lover for hella long, and now it's like, love at first sight again type shit you know these motherfuckers are stuck in the mm-hmm. house teaching their kids learning to have to co-parent and at the same time and it's just i'm sure bringing a whole another element to the dating game marriage game all that shit so it's a lot of shit <laughs> going on and there's a lot of divorces going on right now it's actually divorces are up right now so it's kind of sad because you know people aren't learning to work together and it's like, damn, like, how long you been married? And you get a divorce now? Mm. Like, this is the worst time ever to be getting a divorce. But if any time you should be, be be a teen, right now is the time to be the teen. Right? I understand. But, uh, whatever, what can I say? We'll, we'll get on an hard way. But, yeah, AJ5 for that divorce. Damn. So, here it comes. <laughs> damn, Princess Love. Um, you didn't see that writing on the wall, yeah. girl? I hope she. I hope she got that prenup in order. I want to know what that prenup look like. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, other news: Tory Lane finally apologizes for shooting fucking Megan The Stallion. Womp, 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 womp. So hard. Too they late. were like, "Oh, he finally apologizes for shooting her in the hoof." I was oh like, "Yeah, I'm not fucked up." <laughs> if, if all y'all don't know, a stallion is basically a male force. And you're trying to figure out why Megan would would uh, associate herself with a horse, you know? But, mean, hey, it's I've always here. wondered why it she didn't good. say Megan the mare, or she was going to say something. First of I all, know, Megan the mare like, goes so together, many. and a mare is a female horse. So I never understood why she called herself a stallion when a stallion is like a male stud horse. Like, Hello. That's I so don't weird. even refer to myself as a stallion. Like, I'm six foot tall. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm an Amazon. Okay? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> I love it. But he apologizes and says that he was drunk. So, wah, wah. I don't want to hear that excuse. I'm so tired of people using drunk as an excuse. Like, <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, um, no. Control you yourself. Use drunk as an excuse when, like, you say something you didn't mean. You don't use drunk as right. an excuse when you fucking shoot somebody in the foot. Right. That's like beating somebody's ass and me like, yeah, hey, you know what? I was drunk. Like, no, nah, you knew what you was doing, though. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know. I, I'm like, where were all the bodyguards at the time? Because now she's dating one of her bodyguards. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, if you couldn't pick, uh, let me just not say that. But I'm just like, for real, the bodyguard. <laughs> uh, How cliche, the bodyguard. Fucking your health. God damn it. Everybody <laughs> knows you don't shit in your own kitchen. God damn. Right? So, I guess anyway. She about to learn, I guess though. at least he apologized. He admitted he was wrong. And I mean, is, I guess, at least. Part of the step. Yeah, it's like, yeah, part of the step of, of trying to make things better is just apologize, period. I guess that's you the know? first step. Yeah. First step. Baby steps. Baby steps. Well, she's going to so, have to uh, do baby steps because she got shot in the foot. Not too long. <laughs> right. Somebody had a baby not too long ago. And this is one of our favorite pop stars, hip pop stars, whatever. But see, I'm Taylor. She gave birth again in her bathtub, girl. What? So I'm talking about. You won't have a baby having at home. 
It just makes more sense if you can. I don't know. But so according to like birth? studies, like, huh? So she had a home birth? Yeah, this is her second home birth. Mm. You know, because like in studies, they say that um, a lot of the African American females that try to give birth, like, um, end up in complicated, um, you know, birth. So, I don't know if that's one of the reasons why she decided to do it at home, but a lot more women are deciding to do that because of that. It's kind of crazy. Well, I'm all with it. I, I, you know, if yeah. I ever was to get pregnant, I always said I wanted to have um, a medulla and do it at home and have a water birth and have it natural. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I'm a little blessed out by it, but yeah, it's, it's for the better. For sure, for sure. Um, other news that I do have is um, Cheer Star, uh, Jerry Harris, uh, he plays in that mm-hmm. Netflix special about cheerleaders. Uh, he has been um, allegedly soliciting minors. Mm. And they also found him in possession of child pornography. Um, at the ice did raid his house. They had a warrant to search it, and they went through and found that shit. And then there was, like, a couple pictures that he had sent to some cheerleader academy or some girls, some, some cheer place. But anyways, he was sending them, like, uh, messages saying, uh, would you like to fuck and shit like this. What? Now, he is 19 years old. So, like, if if I'm not mistaken, did they ch- just sign a bill passing that because... You could be a certain age, like now, because 19, you're considered an adult, so you can't listen to anybody under, what, 18? Yeah. So, like, he could have been talking, but I don't know if it's a cheerleading squad. That sounds like 16, 17-year-olds. I don't know about 18 year old. So, I don't know. We don't know the ages of the girls he solicited, but it's just not what's up. And now, I believe they have a new Netflix cheerleading um, show, and everybody is, like, kind of talking about it because... It's like little girls trying to be grown, and they said, you know, this is just a pedophile's dream, like, to be able to watch this. So, have you you seen it? The name of the movie is Cuties, and people are doing a hashtag for it. It's all, it's hashtag cancel Netflix, or Netflix cancellation, or something like that. So... Basically, people are saying that this movie, Cuties, is uh, borderline or it is, you know, kitty porn slash pedophilia. Right. But right. that's all I'm saying. Have you seen the movie? I haven't seen it, but you, ain't, you don't need to have little kid, little girl in those uniforms on Netflix for adults. Why are we watching that shit? They um, that shit for the game, for the parents at the game. We don't need to see them. Well, it's actually not for cheerleading. The movie is actually basically on the premise of, uh, I don't know if they're in South Africa. I can't really tell where they are, but like the girl, the little girl who's like the main character is the, is from Africa, from Senegal. So Uh, I don't care where she's from, what's going on. If she's a little girl dancing on Netflix or anything of that sort, what are we watching? I mean, but is that really true? Because there's been dancing shows of for little girls and for need ten to be years now. Too. Like, I don't understand. What are we doing? Like, where is this going? Like, why are we watching? So, this? are little girls not to yeah. be able are not able to dance without being fetishized by men? Yeah, it's disgusting to me. I hate to even watch it at the games when these little girls be doing shit. I'm like, that's so just fucking inappropriate for the wrong person <clears throat> well it was a but french language film opinion. and it actually won I didn't want my daughter in fucking cheerleading i said no nah. she wanted to do a but no we playing basketball today well i mean to each their own but there are a lot of girls out there who want to be dancers and want to be cheerleaders and like basically the french language film writer um Maduna Debcor, she's the person who directed it. She won the World Cinema Dramatic Directing Award at the Sundance Film Festival earlier this year. And the project has actually widely been praised for its sensitivity and treatment towards the topics. So if you actually read it, it actually, I mean, not read it, if you actually watch the movie, 
you actually get the point of it. So I personally think that it's an important film for people to watch. And I think that the hypersexualization of the pre-adolescent girls that are in the movie is there to create a conversation. And so if you're not even willing to as an adult, it's not for children. It's for us adults to read or to watch and then have a conversation on it. Actually, the movie, the whole point of the movie is to actually point out the sexualization of little girls. And I think if people are not even willing to have that conversation, they're not even willing to watch this movie. They want to cancel Netflix, but it's like stupid because this shit exists. People don't think like that. Like they don't want to see that shit. You know, you're suggesting it when you put it out there with anything that you do once you suggest it and start talking about it it doesn't do anything but flood the gates of that so guess what the number one show of 2021 is going to be on netflix this year i can tell you already and i haven't even seen the shit i can tell you it's going to be the number one show well i definitely recommend i, know that. I recommend for because women you think everybody wants to fucking learn about the, the set, you think that's why it's going to be the number one show because everybody wants to learn something from this? Um, I would hope. It has to be. Well, I mean, if you watch the movie, you'll actually see. And like at the end, me personally, yeah, I thought I'm, that... I am a mature thinking person. Yeah, mm-hmm. I may get the message, but the overall, what they have to do to get the message out there, if a motherfucker is getting turned on by that shit, then maybe that shit should be in the show. Get the message without having to show why and all this shit like maybe they don't need to see that part i don't fucking know well i think if you do get a chance to see the movie you will probably change your mind i'm definitely encouraging the people that i know to go ahead and give it a chance um i think that the most poignant part of the movie is at the end of the movie where the little girl just runs off of the stage at the concert that she's at and she goes home and she changes into her regular play clothes and she goes outside and she starts skipping rope and then at the end it's like she's like rising above it rising above you know the discrimination based on the fact that she was black rising above well, the nobody said the storyline wasn't great like we don't have to get into the storyline but nobody said why the storyline wasn't great we just said like the way they they must be showing it or casting it but that's what i'm saying people are making these people are making these assumptions without even seeing it they're just saying that they're just hearing from one person without seeing it as well so how can you make the assumption but other people cannot i saw the movie so how do you know people haven't seen the movie? If you saw the movie, how do you know no other people haven't seen the movie? Because that's what the whole thing is on Twitter is about. Is that like people are not even oh, watching? Everybody on Twitter talking that that same. A lot of people, no a lot of correct, a lot of people haven't even watched the movie, and they're just spreading the hashtag. So that's why I'm saying I encourage people to watch the movie and come to your own conclusions. Maybe you just have a different perspective and a different opinion about it than other people watching it. But if other people feel that way that have watched it, you can't say that they haven't watched it just because it doesn't agree with your perspective. Mm-hmm, that's not what I'm At saying. At the end of the day, everybody has their opinion. And yeah, no, everybody is definitely thing, entitled to their opinion. That's that not what I'm saying. Over-sexualized? No, that's that not what I'm saying. that somebody needs to stop and take a look? Right, and, but there's and, a lot of people having out fake outrage. They want to show it from that aspect. No, I understand I what you're saying. I, I agree with I what you're saying. I guess I can't talk. I no, did. I agree with what you're saying. I'm just saying that there are a lot of people... But you're talking while I'm talking, and we can't have a discussion if you're talking while the other person's already talking. You can't just butt in and start talking over me. What? Like, other people can't hear what I'm saying if you're going to do that. There, on my mic, I can hear you, but yes, I, like well, I said, I, I agree you, with you. I gave you... I let you talk, and then I, and then I said what I said. But oh so you have to somebody's let buttons are well. triggered. Go ahead. Go well, ahead, I'm just talking. Like I said, what I said. If people feel that way, then there must be something that they feel about it to say that. You can't just say they're making it up because they haven't watched it. You don't know they haven't watched it. I didn't say everybody hadn't watched it. That was my point. I said a lot of the people who were on Twitter were just taking the hashtag, just like how you, you just heard like, oh, the, this is an overly sexualized movie. You hadn't actually seen it, but you already had formed an opinion. And there was many people that I came across in doing my research on the story that they just, they hadn't even seen the movie. They were just like, it's sexualizing children. And I was like, oh, did you watch it? And they were like, no. So maybe if I could hear from, like, I would love to actually, if you guys could reach out to us on Facebook, on our Instagram or on our Twitter and like, let us know. Did you watch the movie? What'd you think about it? 
inquiring minds would like to right know. because maybe they watched the preview and saw in the preview that it wasn't worth watching because of what the contents were i'm gonna look it up on youtube right now so i can see for myself the trailer of the movie i mean because, it's on you know, netflix you could just watch it i can watch the trailer and see what it's about i don't gotta watch a whole movie of a murder of a, when i can watch a trailer and tell it's talking about murder you see what i'm saying like i don't need to watch the whole movie to know that hey this is a murder film or this is a horror film you feel me that's what i'm gonna do okay like i'm gonna see what genre it's in like at least you know yeah, but I mean, you know, if anybody feels that way, then you know, there's got to be some kind of truth to it. If there's a lot of people who feel that way, I mean, also, it wouldn't have won all these awards if it didn't have a valid point in it. Like, oh, sure, it would, sure, it would, of course, it would. What that's what I told you, it's going to be the number one show, and I haven't even watched it. How do I know that it's going to get every fucking award? It's probably going to get an Oscar while we're playing. Well, I, I hope it does. I hope it does because it had a black it. director. You, it had you an African. You wanted to beautify a world in Hollywood. <laughs> well, it was made by a black woman, so I highly doubt that it was coming from the point of view of a pedophile. But yeah, if it does win all more awards, I would be very happy because it was from um, an African um, French woman. Is the person who directed it? So that would be. Told me on YouTube. Described as a disturbing Netflix movie that exploits children, but no, this is every, this is just people following, huh? But it's on YouTube. Well, that's (laughs) the description on YouTube. But I'm encouraging people to make your own decisions. Don't just believe what it says on on YouTube. Watch the shit for yourself and come to your own conclusions. All right, I see the little girl right now. She's dressed in her little cheerleading outfit, like boobs all popped up. Okay. Over sexualizing her. She's how old? I don't know. Uh, right now she's in a midriff shirt. I don't know. Is that over sexualizing a little girl? I don't know. She's kind of trying to tell a story though, but she got to have her in a midriff and her boob popped up to tell the story. I don't know. For instance, nobody said that about like the movie Lolita, which was based on a book and was just as popular. Yeah, and it's right, also. over sexualized. Already from the trailer, it's over. The trailer's over sexualized. So what are we talking about again? So once again, oh my God. I encourage Is people really to talking? watch the movie oh, cool. and come to your own conclusions. Don't just watch the trailer and make your decision off of a three-minute clip or a one-minute clip. Watch the damn movie. If you're going to have an opinion about it, watch oh, it. You've got to watch the movie to see this. Believe me. Don't waste your time, people, watching the movie. Don't even feed into the bullshit because it's on some bullshit. I'm watching the trailer. Watch the trailer and then make your decision. Don't watch the movie. Watch the trailer. That doesn't and make any make sense. Decision. You're gonna make you're gonna base a decision off of something that's one minute long that doesn't really tell the story. Oh, of well, happening. that's how we base all movies. That's why you got to make it happen in that one little minute. Uh, Everybody that's not knows how that. I base all Your movies. trailer will make or break you, homie. I don't know. If you're looking for a more artistic and something deeper and actually looking for a movie that has some actual content to make you think, I suggest it. But anyways, moving right along. Uh, in other news... Well, as a mother, I do not suggest it, y'all. It sexual, over-sexualizes fucking little girls. But you haven't else. seen it, so how can you say that? Once again, you're I like the people on Twitter. The trailer. You're Dolly. like the people on Twitter. You haven't even seen it. You're just making your decision based on what everybody else said. And then you're saying, oh, based I saw this one minute mother. trailer. Based off being a mother, period. That's based bullshit. Off being a That's bullshit. And I've been a stepmother. A mother, I don't think you can speak on it. All right, moving on. No, I've been a stepmother. And I don't think it has nothing to do with that. The whole it's thing is that. Okay. Stepmother is not the No, same. there's so many women in this Why? world who okay, have been sexually this. abused. This is this. Cardi B just said. She doesn't want her child listening to walk. You see, like, when it comes to your own kid, you're like, you feel a certain different type of way about certain things. But that's your job as a parent to protect your child. uh, I'm not saying children should watch this movie. I never said that. I said I think that adults need to watch this movie because it highlights the fact that as a culture, we do over-sexualize women, period. That's the whole point of the movie. The movie has an actual political and social point. And if people would move past the 
initial shock of it, which is stupid because we encourage little girls to be cheerleaders. We We encourage little girls to be in pageants. We encourage little girls to be models. All we ever talk to little girls is about grow up and find yourself a husband and this and that. It's like, no, all we're doing from the beginning is sexualizing little girls. And that's the whole point of the movie. There's a deeper context. And if people want to use their brains and move towards what the actual message of it is, they're able to do that. I found the movie insightful and I found the movie to be brilliant in its own way. I think that it absolutely did point out the fact that we have an over and hyper sexualized climate when it comes to women in general, period, point blank. And we needed little girls to prove that to us. I mean, Netflix like you said, because nobody knows there's all kinds of that sexual- pedophile all of all around us no people being, being i feel like people way. are are <laughs> ignorant to it don't you because if people were so smart about it we wouldn't just now be coming to these realizations about things like fucking the supposed pizza gate and jeffrey epstein trafficking young women and uh harvey weinstein and this and that and blah 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 and all of the fucking sexual traction tracking uh trafficking that goes on in the world no people don't really realize it they think like oh a little girl went missing that's super unfortunate for that family they don't realize that one in three women is sexually I assaulted i don't believe that for one minute i don't it's believe true. that for one minute everything you're saying is just like not true i mean that's the first thing i mean a parent fears they don't want to think that but that is like one of the first thing a parent fears when their daughter goes missing okay if that's true then so, why do we like, have so I much sexual think- abuse in our culture because it's just what? as many boy moms out there raising little boys that grow up to be rapists, grow up to molest children. Uh, it's, okay, it's, you're it's, all over the place now. I'm, so not, I'm, I'm staying on a very consistent path. I'm trying to say that if more people would be understanding of the fact that we, we over-sexualize women... And that there is a stigma on it and that human trafficking and over sexualization of young ladies and all of it, the porn industry, all of it's all connected. If people don't want to realize that and they want to gloss over it, pretend like it's not all connected, then, hey, I don't know what to tell you. Wake up, people. You heard it from uh, me uh, first. I'm, Wake I'm up. lost for words right now. Like, I'm so confused. But, okay. There's nothing to be confused right, about. Please. It's all connected. All right. So, the next topic is... What is the next topic? I don't know. You tell me <laughs> what you got, girl. Let's get into the next topic. Uh, what are we talking about tonight? Relationships. We're talking about all that and, good shit. And politics. Uh-oh. And racist shit. All it's that pretty shit. pretty much about all of it. And, um... Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm running into a lot of people, uh, you know, wondering if they should give their ex a second chance. I'm reading about it online. And, you know, it seems like there's a lot of people out there looking for love, but confused about love. Hmm. So uh, I just want to talk about it. I want to tap in on what I've been seeing and what I think is going on. Well, tell me what you see, boo. I see a lot of people, um, you know, they get into these relationships and like uh, our, our guest that had the uh, sex doll back a couple weeks ago, you know, mm-hmm. they, they get in a relationship, they get hurt and, you know, they don't want to um, evaluate the situation that happened. It's a situation um sometimes it's not always going to be a relationship sometimes you haven't even gotten that far with the person and you know this could even count for like friendships as well like you know uh i I feel like just everybody in general you you expect even me i'm not excluding myself so um we get into these relationships and uh even friendships and we expect a person to be a certain way you know and Basically, we don't want to be disrespected in any kind of way, and I believe for the most part that most people try to do that. But the problem is, is when we do cross those lines, instead of trying to figure out, like, what did we do wrong and examine that part of it, we just kind of chop it up to, like, well, they're tripping, and what the fuck is wrong with them, and they kind of just either move on or kind of move over it. And this happens every time. So maybe these people get tired of it happening where they feel like, oh, this person hasn't addressed what I'm saying or they don't realize that this bothers me or whatever. 
And it's not that they don't realize it. It's just they haven't stopped to look from your perspective and try to figure out what they could have done differently to maybe create a different outcome. And that goes with, like, even relationships. Like, if you're with somebody and they, you know, like, people say, oh, they were always nice in the beginning. And it's like, they changed. It's like, not really do they change. You don't know that they changed. They were just putting on their A game to get with you. And now that they have acquired you, they're back to their normal self, which is something you should have figured out in dating. You know, it's not something that really happens um uh, overnight, but like if you're dating a guy for like two, three, four weeks, like you're gonna realize that this person has these different changes. They're, well, some of them keep a front for a while, but like over a month, like most of these motherfuckers cannot keep a front either way. So, I mean, eventually you start to see, and I feel like people have not learned to adapt to the changes of the person, and instead of like saying, Well, I still like this person, they're just like, Oh, I don't like these changes. And I'm just going to bounce. Like, I'm not going to deal with this shit. But it's like, with every person you meet, there's a lesson in that. And so you're supposed to take this time to learn yourself and, and, and figure out why you're feeling certain ways to adapt to the perspective of the person. I don't know. What do you think, boo? Oh, that's so hard because I do agree with you. But then also I feel like... <sighs> what how do I want to say it first of all you shouldn't be going into a relationship trying to think about how you can change someone what sucks is like you said people are putting up a facade but we all kind of know that because they've been telling us that since the real world right they say uh find out what happens when people start being stop being nice and start being real or something like that right stop being fake and start being real on the real world you know what I mean there's always that honeymoon phase you know, uh-huh. where, yeah. where everything is all good um, and you're just in love and the person can do no wrong. And then for whatever reason, something happens and then, and then you're like, I don't even know this the person that I'm flag talking to. Uh-huh. You get a red flag. You get one little minor red flag that goes boop. Hold up. Hold up. This person's not the right one. But then, but then I feel like people still stay. Say it again. But then I feel like they still stay. They they don't get out of the relationship. Because you're trapped in, again, like the perspective, not the perspective, but the future of like what it can be. Like you're like, but this is good so far. Like, okay, well. I just won't notice that, so because I can see it's going to get better. And then you're just like hoping that this versage keeps continuing, continuously. You you keep hoping that it continuously gets bigger and better, and it never does. Sometimes it goes downhill. It just depends on like how long the person wants to keep a facade going. You know, in some relationship. But I'm how not, long can you keep that facade going? Question. Especially in how long can you keep that facade going, especially in this day and age with like social media, like you're in constant communication. Like, think about it. If somebody can't reach you on your cell phone, like if somebody somebody's trying to call you and I know you've had it where you were talking to some dude and like for whatever reason you ghosted him over the phone. But then he starts hitting you up on fucking Facebook. Then you block his ass on Facebook. Then he hits you up on IG. Then he hits you up on the snap. And it's like, what the fuck? Well, in that case, that I mean, are we talking about the same person? Like, okay, we, we're not fucking with them anymore? I don't know. I feel like they kind of make you, they drag you into like fucking dealing with them and I, I think it goes for guys and girls i think girls do it too i think like if you feel like all of a sudden a dude's not sweating you as hard like even if you're not even all that into him if he like starts ghosting you you'll fucking you'll like get a little bit of act right <laughs> Um, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I, that's not how I see it. Uh, <laughs> you don't think so? so? Don't like, know. if a guy, like, it's the whole play hard, playing hard to get kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, I, I don't enjoy the game of that, no. But, um, 
if a dude starts ghosting me, like, I'm gone. Like, you lost me. I'm on to my next thing. Like, it's not even that I'm on to the next man. I'm on to what I'm doing. Like, I'm back. Like, that little focus is no longer there. So do you think that's because you have, like, so many options right now? Because, like, you know, like, if a dude starts starts acting stupid, you could be like, fuck you, dude. I could be on another dude tonight. I could be on another date tonight. Like... Mm, no, I, again, I, I don't look at it like that. I would say I, I don't have I don't have options because it's not what I want. So, like, yeah, there's people around, but it's not options because there's nothing that I want. You know what I mean? So, it's like, they're not an option. They think they're an option, maybe. I don't know, but they're not an option. I don't know. I feel like I have option overload sometimes. It's actually, like, a phrase. Like, it's like a, it's like a millennial dating phrase because it's like, basically right now, like, just think about it. So like, say you're talking to some dude, right? Whatever. He's not feeling you or you're not feeling him, whatever. Somehow you get ghosted or you ghost him. And then you're like, well, fuck, I'm Mm -hmm. still bored. I still want to do something tonight. Like, I don't want to just be sitting in the house with me and the fucking dogs. Like, I want to do something. It's like, all you have to do is just pick up your phone and, like, you're a swipe away from, like, a new experience. Of course. Always. you. Uh, yeah, you always have those options, but I don't know. <laughs> options come in many forms and fashions, but... Uh, I mean, or you could just you know. choose to stay at home and hang out with Bob. You feel me? Yeah, you could do that as well. Or you could just take the time for yourself and do for yourself as well, depending on, like, what stage you're in of life. There's so many different options, but the the point is, is you meet these people and, and they keep this facade. Depending on how much they want the pussy, is how long they'll keep the facade going. But it do, it does not last. I would, I can't say for sure, but in my opinion, it doesn't last over usually a month to two months. Hmm. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, how long you? Have you seen a man carry a facade? I've, I've seen men in a league. I mean, isn't that the whole because... point of, like, catfishing somebody? That people can keep up a facade for as long as you let them. For as long as you let them get away with the facade. That is true. They can get in your mental like that as well. Narcissists are good for that. <laughs> but for the most part, for the average person dating, you're not really... Uh, gonna go longer than a month. They'll see that shit drop. You won't be acting the same. You ain't getting flowers. You ain't calling as much. And it also depends on how quick you give the motherfucker to pussy. That can also change the name of the game as well. Hmm. So, you know. What are your rules for giving up the pussy? Say it again. What are your rules for giving up the pussy? How long do you make them wait? You know, I just wait to see if a motherfucker's really just feeling me like that like you're not just gonna get it and i don't know you're feeling me like that like i have been known to do that before but i've learned from those mistakes to just be like "Mm -mm, i'm not i'm just gonna wait it out like if you really like me that much you'll fucking wait it out too other than that it's not going down like i don't deal with it anymore but when i was younger i did so i've I've learned from my mistakes though Mm -hmm. you know again that's something i took a step back and evaluated myself and just people aren't doing that and so they got this versage up and stuff you know and once you learn from your mistakes it's almost like a a self-healing process as you're self-healing and learning from your mistakes all together like you come into new people and new relationships a whole nother way of thinking (laughs) like completely different so yeah, no, you're you're less likely to play the games and do the dumb shit. But you know, I feel I feel the opposite. I feel like it in reverse. Like I feel like when I was younger, I used to be all like, you know, oh, I'm never gonna give up the pussy. <laughs> you gotta date. Like you gotta be my man to get this kitty cat. And now I'm just like, um, now I feel more like I'm not gonna say like a man because I feel like men are 
men don't be offended, but I feel like y'all are gross as hell. I feel, I feel, I feel more just like in control of it and more like if I want to have sex with somebody, if I'm like feeling you and like, I want to fuck, then like, we're going to fuck and that's it. And then, but, but that doesn't mean that I want to be with you. That doesn't mean that I want you to be my fucking man. You know what I mean? <laughs> it could just mean that I just want some fucking dick, bro. Uh, you want a fuck boy, just say that. Sometimes you, that you just want a fuck boy. Sometimes you just want a fucking hot ass. Oh my God, look at his fucking muscles. Look at his fat fucking cock. And like, you just, that's all you want. And like, so then other times yeah. it's like, you know, okay, no, I really want a relationship. I really want to like chill. I want to like make babies with you and fucking get married and do this other shit. And it's like two totally different vibes. Yeah. So my philosophy to that is, <laughs> funny you should say that, is most women have gone into reverse of whatever the fuck they did not do before they want to do now. And if they did it before, they don't want to do it now. So you kind of have to figure out where a chick is or has been before you, you should like jump into a relationship. There's, there's the answer right there. You and know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to concur wild, with that. Huh? I concur with that. Yeah. Cause I wild out when I was young. So I'm like much calmer now. Most people that wild out with me are much calmer now. Like we're just on a different level. We were like, man, we did that when we were young, like super did that. We wore that shit out. So, um, you know, a lot of my experiences come from when I was younger. Like, a lot of the shit that I even talk about comes from when I was younger. Like, I was just, man, very ex- experimental. But now, you know me, and you be like, oh, she don't do shit. Like, you're right. Goddamn, I don't do shit, because I already did every fuck thing you could do. Like, done. <laughs> I learned. I moved on. You know, and that's the thing, like, I think... um, I think it was Tony Braxton who just said that. She said she wished she would have had more sex when she was younger. You know, she's probably feeling that shit right now. Like, damn, I just want to get let loose. Well, I definitely am feeling, I know, like the other day, some, some, some person told me like, I go, oh my gosh, am I a cougar now? And he goes, no, you're too young to be a cougar. You're still a puma. (laughs) (laughs) So bitch, I guess I'm a little... I'm a little puma on the prowl. <laughs> okay. I'm not identifying with no goddamn puma. Wow. <laughs> Motherfucker. Bad still kitty. still in my 30s. I'm young. For now. <laughs> I'm not. I'm still in my 30s. That's why he said I was too young to be a cougar. He, that's why he said oh, you're a puma. He was like, yeah. you only get to be a cougar if you're over 40. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Out of control. <laughs> their next neighbor is like you a panther <laughs> <laughs> snow leopard motherfucker <laughs> anyway don't get me started on that shit but yeah um, so I just feel like people need to really work on themselves get to know themselves better and like really figure out what it is they want before they get into a relationship because a lot of us jump in like three soft attraction right away like it's just ooh he's cute I want to get with him and like, oh, I'm like, oh, like that shit irritates me because people, men that find me attractive feel like they should be my man. Like, no, you don't get to fucking think that just because the person's attractive. Like, no, that's not how it works. So, I mean, it's even to the point now, it's like, people be like, you know, we got a great vibe. Like, okay, I have a great vibe with everybody. Do realize that. Like, that doesn't mean you're special once again. Like, I'm cool with everybody. I don't, that's who I am. I'm going to vibe with you. If you're, if so, you're good people, I'm going to vibe with you. If you're not good people, then you're not going to be able to stand me. Well, Period. what does it take? What does it take for a dude to get your attention in that way versus like, how does he not be in the friend zone? Uh, that would take a man that was just like really intelligent and really smart really caring, like somebody who's put down all of what society has built up, they take that down. Like, you have to come full-fledged with me, otherwise I think you're fucking bullshitting me. Like, I just can't take that bullshit, you know? I have to be like, damn, this this motherfucker really likes me. Like, dang, he really likes me. Like, beyond doubt, he really likes me. 
You know, it can't be that half-assed shit. The half-assed shit gotta go. And that's where people fuck up because who who comes full-fledged anymore? Everybody's scared, you know? So. I do think people would be scared, but like that's why I'm just like on that party and bullshit mode. I'm like, I just want to party and bullshit and party and bullshit and bullshit and party. And then like, then it's like if something fucking deeper comes of it, then it'll happen naturally. And like, it's whatever. Uh huh. And those people will naturally want to be around you. That shit's gonna be a vibe. You're gonna know that they give a fuck. They're gonna do the little extra shit to know that you <laughs> let you know they give a fuck. Like. I already know. I've seen the facade, okay? Just, you know, you got to be able to keep that shit. <laughs> I mean, are you uh, saying facade? You're driving me crazy. Facade, woman. Facade. Facade, yes. Like a facet, like a facet of your personality. My it's bad, like... people. I get it, okay? <laughs> this, this woman does pronounce things wrong from time to time. My bad. Thank you for pointing that out. That's that S-E accent. Don't trip, y'all. <laughs> Man. <you> motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, I think, yeah. like, like sex love is, like, one kind of love, right? But, like, I think it's harder to find that, like, real, like, spiritual agape. Like, I just fucking love you because I fucking love you kind of a love. I feel like that doesn't even exist anymore. No, I mean, it can, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. I I can't even begin to wonder what men think nowadays because everybody changes on a daily, like, people are changing daily. (laughs) I just, yeah, you got to find somebody who's on your attraction level, like, all the way, vibe level, attraction level, all of the above, because I know, notice, let me pronounce that right, boy, she'll come for me, Um, (laughs) that if, you know, as much as I keep raising my vibrations and my understanding and knowledge in myself, that's the kind of people that I encounter. They're like a little above the average. So I just keep trying to raise my vibrations as much as possible. I heard that. You really attract the like. So and if you guys are interested in raising your vibrations, we kind of got into it a couple of episodes ago, but we are wanting to plan a retreat. So if you guys are interested in raising your vibrations and sitting down and like really getting to know your spiritual self, finding your spiritual center, yes, then um, hit us up. We're going to be organizing a small gathering. Um, It will be very intimate. Um, We will have uh, facilities in place for everybody to have a coronavirus test before they arrive so we can make sure that we are all safe while we commune. Um, it's going to be lit AF. So if you guys are interested in that, hit us up, give us a message on Facebook and let us know. Um, it will be out in the desert so that we can get a hold of that spiritual vortex. Uh, and if you guys want to know more information, you can just hit us up there. Yep. Dirt Talk 101 Vegas at gmail.com. Leave us an email. Yeah. Definitely. And also let us know what other workshops you guys want to see at the uh, at the gathering. Right now we have a bunch of different options, but we want to hear more feedback from you guys of some workshops you guys would be interested in uh, learning about. One of the ones that I'm most interested in learning about is tantric sex and tantric healing. <laughs> yes, I want to know. I want to know all all about that kundalini. <laughs> Carlucci wants to know about yeah. the kundalini and how to the the proper positions for that. I'm so with that. Yeah, like just love on a whole nother level. So yeah, definitely will be a reset button for your spirituality. Yes, come and get your cup filled up. Um, we have a couple more minutes. I do want to talk about something that people probably, I mean, they talk about it. We talk about it. They know about it. But do they know what's in it? Do you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. I'm talking about cum. I'm talking about semen. <laughs> I'm talking about oh jizz. God. Do you know what jizz is made of? No, I don't know what jizz is made of. It is? I, I, don't, I don't fuck with jizz. Oh, you know bukkake? No bukkake, young no. lady. Yeah, no. 
Um, well, I actually do. I am not putting no kind of nothing in my fucking mouth. That's weird. Come turn so me on. Like? You don't like to be cummed on? You don't like it when, like, when your fucking man just busts his nut all over you? <laughs> I do not. No? I like it. I, I'm, I put it on my titties. <laughs> 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 oh God! Yeah, you're a freak. I, I mean, I agree. Good. You're I a mean, born freak. We couldn't have the show together if I didn't love the D, and I'm not talking about Detroit. Anyways, um, <laughs> well, I'm undercover freak. So it's like a whole nother level with me. That that shit is for the porn stars and bullshit. I, I don't even fuck with that shit. Sometimes I like, like to fuck. Wait, sometimes you don't like to fuck like a porn that- star. Sometimes you want to make love. Sometimes you want to yeah. do that like slow, sensual I'm candle I'm a porn bullshit. Star. Fuck a porn star. Them porn stars don't even do it right. Like really, not I, definitely. If I was a porn star, I would have the number one shit. I'm a, I'm S E A K A tornado head. Yes. So you like to suck that dick? I don't really like to suck the dick that much. I like to get head. I don't really like to give it. I'm selfish. I, I didn't say I like to give it, but hey, I mean, you know, when you get us something, you just get us something. You just know you get us something, you know what I mean? She said, I didn't say I, didn't say I like to do it. I just said yeah, I was good at it. it. <laughs> well, Yo, I'm good at that shit, though. Let's, let's get to the bottom of this for all you motherfuckers. I think, you know, if he's like this real crazy-ass fucking freak, it, it, it's actually a skill I learned to do to, to make a man come faster, like, because I hate fucking dick. So I was like, man, I'm about to perfect this shit to where the fuck I don't have to do it that long. Like, I need this motherfucker to nut now. Like, two <laughs> seconds, you're done. Like, you can't take it no more. So, you know what I mean? I had to learn the tricks and trades of it so that I could fucking figure the shit out to where, hey, you know, you ain't gonna last very long me doing that shit. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm gonna be sucking dick for no 30 minutes like these bitches porn stars. What the fuck? Uh, sometimes I just, you don't just like to do it sometimes. It's not just like... You're not just doing no, I like it. No, to get it done. Just <laughs> done and done. You know, sometimes I don't even want to fuck. I just want, you know, I you know, like, I know you're horny, so look, I'm just going to beep boop. Done. Done. There's a lot of guys that would probably I love that. So, I, I need to get back to watching my shit right now. You know what I mean? I got other shit to do. No. Like I, I said, I'm selfish. I'm definitely it. not giving up no head without, like, getting the best D ever. Like, if I give you a head, oh, you better fucking lay head. that pipe like a motherfucking plumber. You feel me? You better lay that shit so smooth. Not me. <laughs> well, anyways, you have you ever have you ever wondered what was income? What's in semen? Uh, I actually have wondered what the fuck is in that shit. Because that shit... <laughs> it's a hot mess and it don't taste good whatsoever so uh you i i would spit it out for it sure. don't taste good well, it should taste it should taste all right anyways we're not even gonna get into that that's a whole nother can of worms <laughs> like who the fuck wants to swallow snot i'm sorry it need they need to eat more pineapples and fruits and vegetables and it'll taste good you know the fucking oh no oh <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right. But what? Well, let me just tell you what the fuck is in it. You're so crazy. I can't even tell you. All right. So. Well, along with the sperm. Okay. The sperm is what actually gets you pregnant. Along with the sperm, there's protein. There's water. uh, And there's a variety of other components, including sugar, both from fructose and glutose. Uh, the, and that's why if you eat certain fruits and vegetables, it'll taste better instead of being so bitter. It'll taste that's sweet. Why my shit tastes good. God, I eat all that for real. God, <laughs> there's a little bit of sodium, so there's a little dash of salt. There's some oh, yeah. um, citrate. Like that's why when you know when your man has really been working out a lot and you taste that orange lemony taste when they come, that's oh, what that is. This, what? <laughs> The There's some well, zinc in there. There's magnesium. That shit's good for you. That shit's good for you. There's all kinds of fucking vitamins and minerals in that bitch. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, th- no, those no, are. I'm not yeah, that shit ain't even funny. <laughs> those are just some of the components of what's in your man's 
Jizz juice. Right now. <laughs> she's lying, y'all. She's, she's about to go. Shit. She's about to go try and taste that lemony orange taste that I just talked about. She's about no, to go do it right now. She said it's not going down. Well, I don't know. I've got myself all worked up, so I think I might go have to go take care of real deal Leo real quick. Anyways, um, you got anything to tell these people before we get up out of here? Man. <laughs> Until next time, y'all. Be good. Be safe. If you're not good, name it after me. If you're not safe, don't call me at all. Y'all have a good night. And we out. And don't go watch that shit either. <laughs> <laughs> watch it. Don't listen to her. <laughs> Save sex and paychecks, y'all. Save sex and paychecks.